Concrete and Materials Laboratory. Let's go inside. So uh, this is our ELE machine. ELE. Manufactured by ELE International. You see it there? So it's hydraulically operated. Here's a hydraulic pump over on the right side. However, it does have to be plugged in because the, the pump is electric. So you see the wire coming out the back here. I plug it into the wall up here. So it's plugged in. And now this particular machine has a computer. So if you go around the back, let me find it right there. So I'm turning it on. And let's see what this display says. Okay, so here's what it looks like when I turn it on. Uh, so when I load the specimen using this machine, uh, I'll get a digital reading. Uh, you know what digital means? Uh, digital as opposed to analog. So the Tinius Olsen machine had uh, an analog gauge on it. Analog meaning that it had a pointer that moves. Uh, this will be digital, meaning discrete numbers. I'll get discrete numbers as the readout. Uh, it probably provides more accuracy than the old Tinius Olsen machine does. It also stores the maximum capacity. So if I press this icon here, it's got a touch screen. Okay, so what it's showing me is a record of the tests that I've done on this. I think I'm the only guy who ever uses this machine. Uh, it looks like November 14th of 2019 was the last time I used it. And then I used it uh, November 12th. Let's see what it says for this one. Well, here it says uh, November 12th, 2019. How much did this specimen take? 103,511 pounds. 103,511 pounds. So when did I do this? November 12th? November 12th. This is consistent. November 12th. Is that what the other one said? Obviously, I don't rehearse this. Oh, yeah. November 14th. Okay, no confusion. Yes, right. Uh, so these are all tests I did. Uh, so that's one of the advantages of using this machine. Uh, one of the advantages of using this machine is that it stores uh, relevant data. The Tinius Olsen machine obviously does not do that. Okay, another advantage to using this machine is it's got a cage. You see this cage here? I can open it up over here. Lift this up and open the door. You see the bullseye in there? So uh, what good is it to do our test inside of a cage like this? Well, uh, sometimes when these cylinders finally break, uh, they break uh, pretty catastrophically, meaning that uh, there's shards of concrete flying. And so the cage protects us from the concrete shrapnel. So that's another advantage of using this machine is that you've got this cage that uh, protects us from flying shrapnel. Now, of course, the disadvantage is that we can't really see clearly uh, what's happening to the specimen during the test. I mean, you can see through the screen here, kind of, but uh, not as good as you can see it when we use the Tinius Olsen machine. Uh, this machine also has a greater capacity than the Tinius Olsen machine. Uh, I believe this goes up to 500 kips. Uh, so this would probably be the better machine to use if you were doing a lot of tests at once. If I had a lot of different cylinders to test at once within a short period of time, uh, this would probably be a better machine to use, uh, being that it stores the data. It stores the data for me. Okay, so the home button. Okay, when I want to do a test, let's see what this button does. All right, so O test 036, that will be my next test. Uh, 12 by 6 inches, that's the size of my specimen. Uh, this is October 24th, 2020. It's a Saturday afternoon, October 24th, 2020. Uh, it is uh, 4.17 in the afternoon, approximately. Is 4.17? I think the clock's wrong. My watch says 4.47 about, so the clock's not quite right. The clock's a half hour behind, it looks like. Oh well, the date is correct, October 24th. Uh, so this is the machine that I'm going to use to test uh, specimen number two. So I'm going to come back on Tuesday 
and to test specimen number two using this machine. So let me press the home button. And then let me shut this off before I forget. So I'm gonna reach around the back. So go around the back, flip the off switch like so. And the computer is turned off. So let's see this in context. Oh, before I show you the whole thing, uh, here are the controls. Uh, this turns on the hydraulic pump, this little switch you see at the top. It turns on the hydraulic pump. And this lever, I'll explain that when I'm doing the test. This right here, this valve, I can turn that to add load to the specimen. Uh, I'll explain more uh, when I do the test on Tuesday. So let's look at the whole thing in context. And next to it, so this is the ELE concrete compression testing machine. Next to it is the tinea sulfur, right over here. So there you have it. Saturday, October 24th, about 5 p.m. in the evening. So here are the cylinders remaining in the tank. The three at the top, those are my cylinders. So on Tuesday, I will break the next cylinder. I broke one of them last Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I'm going to break the next one, one of these three. So for the time being, they will be housed in this bathtub, waiting for me to break them in their proper order. Okay, so following the checklist, first I turn on the computer, turn it on in the back, like so. And the display comes on. Okay, so it says here on my checklist, touch the clock icon. The clock icon, that's the one on the far left. I showed it to you in the previous clip. Uh, 750 pounds per second loading rate. Uh, it's 10:27, uh, 2020. Uh, the computer is telling me 6:32 in the morning. It's actually 7:03 in the morning. I think I told you that the clock was a little bit behind. Verify the test file name. So this is O test O36. Uh, then it says touch the check mark icon. Okay. I uh, place the specimen in the cage, so I pull this open. Uh, it does not make that funny springing sound when I open up the cage. That was just a sound effect that I added in the previous clip. One of the previous clips. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put the specimen on top of the ram. There's a ram here. This is going to move up. So uh, let me put the specimen in here. Okay, are we filming here? All right, verify that the control handle is in retract mode. Okay, so this switch right here controls the hydraulic pump. This toggle switch controls the hydraulic pump. Uh, so there's the hydraulic fluid in here. Uh, this is the breather, the breather plug, that little red thing is the breather plug. So uh, this is a control handle right here. Can you see the settings? It's got retract, hold, metered advance, full advance. Now this valve right here, I can turn that to control the loading rate. So you got a good look at the controls here. Okay. All right, so uh, what do I do now? Okay, so I plugged in the hydraulic pump. Now let me turn it on. Make sure your goggles are on. Okay, rotate the control handle to hold. Okay. Uh, now to close the gap, can you see this here? See there's a gap, a gap here between the top of the specimen and the upper plate. So to close that gap, Rotate the control handle to full advance. Okay, so rotate this to full advance. There we go, nice and snug. How are we doing here? Okay. Uh, so, I'm on hold here. I put the control handle on hold. Specimen is nice and snug. Uh, close the cage door and lock it 
goggles, rotate the control handle a meter in advance. Meter in advance. And then to turn the metering valve counterclockwise to increase the loading rate. Picking up load. Watch this. Now let's look at the control panel. So this is the metering valve right here. I can turn that to speed up the loading rate if I want. over here. No, you don't see much there. I'm going to turn the metering valve a little bit. Turning the metering valve a little more. Up 
picking up some more load. Okay, so you can write this down. The cylinder took 56,735.9 pounds. It looks like 2006.6 PSI. So press the home icon. And let's see if it saved it. So today, 10-27-20. O-Test 036. So I can come back later and and I get that information if I if I didn't write it down. Okay, home icon. So here's the specimen. What kind of failure is this? Can I walk around the back? Okay, so I think you've seen the whole thing. What kind of failure is this? What is the failure mode? <laughs> 